There are only two things I can't stand in this world. People who are intolerant of other people's cultures and the Dutch. I think the girl at the grocery store register likes me. She's always checking me out. What's up, YouTube? Back at it with another Alpha Star cast, and this time featuring another pro player. I guess we'll introduce him first because... Oh, he's just got those dreamy, big, pillowy lips. It's hard to not get distracted and get lost in his eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the ever-handsome, the ever-ferocious, Blue Protoss Hearthstone. If it ain't Dutch, it ain't much. To the lower right, the Red Zerg player infiltrating the ladder. Once again, we feature Alpha Star. Now, a lot of people have been asking me to start listing the dates of when these games are cast. That's actually really difficult to do, and in a lot of cases, I don't have that information. We know the rough month that these games came from, but in this case, I can actually pinpoint exactly when for you. This game, dear viewers, was played out on August 19th, 2019. I stumbled onto a major company conspiracy. And it's being recorded on August 22nd, 2019. And if everything goes according to plan, it should be uploaded on YouTube on August 25th, 2019. So there's some dates. Dates and more dates for all you lonely single people out there. Hopefully that's plenty for you. But Harstam versus Alpha Star. One thing I'll note really quick is probably in the top bar or the top link in the description down below, Harstam did do a video on this himself. Uh, he did some analysis, talked about his game, went through the replay. I'll link it over there if you guys want to see his point of view on it. I'm not here to do crazy analysis. I'm just here to cast the game and have some fun with it. So if you want to see the breakdown from the man himself, be sure to check it out over on his YouTube channel. And he was really kind enough to share the replay with me, too, so I really appreciate it. Don't mind uh, sending some people his way if you're interested in more <laughs> Alpha Star content. And I guess hearing from the pros could be really valuable, too. Uh, but it should be noted that at the time of this game, I'm pretty positive Harstam did not know this was Alpha Star. Uh, they've definitely been barcoding this up on the ladder, and you've been seeing people find out after the fact because of things like the APM versus the EPM. But it doesn't really work with Zerg the same way it does for the other races we've discovered recently. Um, but also the control groups thing is a pretty big deal. So just noting control groups are on, but there's nothing for these lings for Harstam. You see the control groups. and Oh, this is actually a problem. Uh, probes are going to get pulled for this. I've seen stats lose to Scarlet in under three minutes. I think it was a two minute, 47 second game where this pylon decided how the fate of the game went. It's a very important pylon and that's why Harston pulled probes for it. If he didn't, he would have easily lost the game here and now. But at the same time, Alpha Star doesn't go for the pylon, instead chases probes to the main. Maybe a bit of a bait, maybe not, but either way, they're playing Ring Around the Rosie with this single probe before realizing, yeah, let's do literally anything else. So unfortunately for the AI in this case, she's not going to get too much done. But over here for Harstam, he's well defended, and this wall didn't end up being the compromise that I think he was very... Probably terrified there for a second, but outside of the initial shock, it probably wasn't a problem for him. Uh, we also need to plug up that hole up here in a second with this probe by the looks of it. Mm-hmm. It's a Robo coming out of Harstam too, so no Stargate play for this. Not a problem though, Robo pushes are really strong, and Stargates have kind of fallen out of popularity for PvZ. I, I talk about this a lot in my cast, but I really do miss the era of the two Stargate, two Robo follow-up. I think that was just some of the most fun PvZ times, but regardless, Harstam's got Resonating Glaives coming out, so it's going to be a lot of adepts. Maybe this is punishment for those lings, a little bit of tit for tat. You hit my pylon, I will destroy your life. Either way, Resonating Glaives is something that's very terrifying to deal with, whether you know it's coming or not. We also have, huh, the Dark Shrine too. It's not usually Archons that go with this, but if this is just like for the four DTs initially, do the harassment while he bulks up his Adept account, and then after the initial poke, does like a big all-in, I can see that being really good. But while I mentioned that uh, at the start of this cast, Harstam does have a video of this, I didn't actually watch it, just as a heads up, so I don't know how this plays out. I just know that he did it, and I avoided watching it because I like to keep all of our content spoiler-free as much as I can. So... On that note, uh, it does appear that this Dark Shrine is real and committed, and it's not a fake out. This Overlord here on that nice little roost is going to see, well, there's nothing to see, really. Not down here on the low ground, at least. Heading up to the high ground would be nice, but actually now seeing additional Adepts warped in, four is not such a big red flag, but when you start seeing more than this, it's usually because there's a commitment of some variety. Ling's also going to dodge the Adepts going through the middle of the field. Harsom cancels one of those four. Oh, he's so precise and so good. 
Meanwhile, income is uh, just kind of holding even for both. I don't have graphs because this is from the ladder, but you can see both of them, about 1,700, 1,800 minerals. Uh, the Adept's in a pretty good spot. Buys some time, transfers behind the wall. It's going to be low on health, but these Lings won't have an easy time breaking in. And while this goes on, knowing full well there are no Lings on the defense, Parsim starts going to town on the mineral line, and looks like Alpha Star pulled an impact there. Hang on, this is a replay after all. Let's rewind this a second. What just happened here that all these drones... They weren't just pulled away. They were like attack commanded away from the Adepts. So they started chewing at the hatchery. There's a game we cast where Impact ended up killing... Like Impact, pro Korean Zerg player, killed a hatchery by accident with one drone doing that and not realizing it. So uh, it's highlight worthy because that's a real problem possibly here for Alpha Star. But, ooh. Ling's in position for this one, catches the Adepts. This is a very nice cleanup. DTs, though, added into the mix are a little bit spicier, and this will probably, if not definitely, kill the hatchery. What's great about this, too, is those two DTs, or four DTs, become two Archons. But I don't think he needs to do that yet. I don't think there's... Oh, there's no layer for our Alpha Star. There's only one Spore Crawler in the main base. Detection is an issue. Oh, sorry. There was a Spore Crawler in the natural. It's just rooting over here. But unfortunately, because now it's out of position, these DTs get in on this side. Oh my god, that queen just got deleted. There was no death. There was no body. It was just removed from the universe. Thanos snap style. Now that's a lot of DTs to work with. And the Spore Crawler has rerouted itself, so these DTs have been revealed. The Warp Prism oh, scoops up and flies back away. I should note that this game, because we know when it was played, is pre-patch. Meaning this Warp Prism still has 6 pickup range and does not cost the 250 minerals that it does presently live on the ladder. Um, not the biggest deal, but worth noting, because that was a pretty close call. And well, back at home, we do have some sentries coming into play. The follow-up of this is a forge for Harstom. Narcons chase these roaches down. That's a pretty easy catch over here. Uh, let's see to the main base of Alpha Star. Still no layer. So just sticking on hatchery tech, whether this is on purpose or not, I guess is to be determined. Nice drag and drop with the Archons, picking off a lot of these Lings. Goes to Bowser when the Ravagers try to land. Unfortunately, never going to hit that Warp Prism, not in a million years. Especially not when it's Alpha Star playing Zerg. Oh, picks off that too, not bad. Third base gets taken from Harsh, some of this goes on. So I really like that he's not getting silly or frivolous with this. I was a little worried because the DTs made this look like this was going to be maybe a bit too committed. I mean, after all, 6 DT is caught in detection. That feels a little bit bad, man. But uh, at this point, Harstom's pretty stable. Uh, I think what's great about this, too, is he's not even a horse. <laughs> no, but for real, uh, he stabilized his economy very well. Not that it was really disrupted, but he continues to advance and grow. His third base on the way. Whereas Alpha Star, you know, took the hit on the third base. And these drones transferring back are not going to have a great time long-distance mining. Templar Archives as well, so I guess we're going to see the eventuality of Storm. I, what I really like about this, though, is because, again, Harstom doesn't know that this is a robot versus a human. And what's really great about this particular situation is he's not taking this lightly. Like, he's not goofing around and building, like, seven Stargates, and he's not fooling around with Alpha Star. He's treating his opponent as if it was a real opponent, if it wasn't a human being on the other end of this ladder. So that's kind of cool to see. I mean, I've mentioned it before many times. There's no way to know in-game. You can only really find out after the fact. Because Alpha Star even does things like mimicking the good luck and have fun. And uh, if it loses, it types GG and stuff like that. On that note, for the lose win record, too. Uh, we've only had one pro player so far lose to Alpha Star. All the other pros, PT Drogo, Neeb, uh, Rainer, even Rainer's off-race more specifically... Uh, Bly, they've all been beating Alpha Star, so it's clear that it can put up a fight, but not good enough to win against a lot of these pros. But when I watch and cast these games, even though I do totally go into it with the assumption that the pro is going to win, it is more interesting to me watching the way Alpha Star reacts and plays. Not because, like, oh, it's mimicking human traits, it looks like it could be a person, but it's more like, are the decisions it's making good? Uh, that was cool, he recalled the DTs back home after sniping the base. That's very smooth, actually. Nice, Harslam. Uh, this is one of the Archons. That feels a little bit worse. But <clears throat> throughout this, Alpha Star has still continued to make a lot of units. Uh, not getting over cocky with drones. Double expanding to make up for a base loss. It looks a little bit silly, but I mean, I've seen Koreans do this for years. So it's not a bad strategy at all. 
But the Rocha Ravager count is going to have to go soon. There is kind of a timer ticking because, of course, behind all this, whether it's a Disruptor or, in this case, Storms or whatever the case may be, there are going to be more bigger, better units. Harston will have good upgrades. They'll have higher tech. Roaches really are kind of your bottom of the barrel. Ravagers kind of help bridge the gap to the next tier a little bit. But realistically, there's no Zerg player out there that wants to be fighting with just like 150 supply of roaches. <laughs> you want to have some variety in that mix. And uh, so far, it's still just roaches. At least plus one's on the way, so Alpha Star's going to have at least that much going for it. Her, whatever. Uh, of course, the Bowels are a lot of damage too, but it's very unlikely Harsom's going to get caught out here. If anything, this Cross of Bowels will be breaking force fields. But that Immortal Count's pretty strong. Storm's finishing up here in just a second. Uh, actually, I don't think... Are there even any Templar with this army? Oh, yeah, they're just a little behind. Ravagers almost got them too. Ravagers have a little bit less health than Roaches by about 25. So Storm will be really effective here if it lands those shots. But uh, stay away from the Curse of Biles. Nice dodges. Starts pushing in. Force fields go down. Curse of Biles miss everything once again. Now stuck around the hatchery. Things are going to get a little bit dicey because this sort of split helps favor Harstum as the units down to the south now are cut off. Be it through force fields or through storms or sheer force of will. Yeah, there's no easy way to engage this Protoss army. Let's go for the sandwich, though, and I think this is probably the best way to engage this. Like, this is the best of a bad scenario. 122 army supply. You might be thinking, Rifkin, you're being really stupid. This is so easily handled for the Zerg, but I don't know that that's the case. We're watching storms do a lot of damage. So many of these roaches are one shot from dead. The Immortals, obviously, are the big heavy hitters in this case, and they haven't even executed most of this. This has mostly been storm, archon, and zealot damage, right? Those Immortals have hardly been part of the fight, and if they do get to be part of the fight, all these this is one-shot territory for all these roaches. Still, though, an army supply worth holding on for, to say the least. 35 roaches, 3 ravagers. I mean, Alpha Star is not out of the game yet, but let's be clear. 50 probes, or excuse me, 50 drones versus 72 probes. Upgrades going well for Harstam, even now advancing out to plus 3, whereas Alpha Star is stuck on plus 1. And this army has not had enough time to recover. Not the slightest. The rest of the army's busy over here. They were fighting something, but distracted. Now heading up to the top side. But caught in. Oh, a worst case scenario. Everything's caught in by those force fields. Archons get the maximum splash damage. And the Immortals, once again, not even really part of the fight. Just shooting at the hatchery because they can. Well, starting to head down southwards. This Roach Army is not looking much better than the other one. Down to 35 workers, and realistically, one base mining is the main's about halfway done. So, like, 1.5 1 bases mining. While this goes on, Harsom's taking a fourth. And this has been a really great display out of Harsom, I think, on how to play Protoss against someone who plays this, like, heavy Roach style. Because he's been handling this very well. Uh, no crazy special tactics. A couple of DTs here and there, sure. But, I mean, for the most part, it's just good army control. Landing storms and backing away. Maybe overcommitting now, but I think it's because he knows he's basically on the edge of winning this game. These roaches all at about, you know, three quarters health for the fight. Not quite one shot ter territory, but close to it. Archon soaking the shots and there's immortals still standing. Now pushing into this with the rest of the immortals. Army supply dwindling for Alpha Star down to eight roaches. Those DTs down to the south never came into the fight, by the way. There's still four DTs, but GG's get called. Ladies and gentlemen, Harstum defeats the machine. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the youtube -y things, and I look forward to seeing you for the next cast. Dutch hater!